Our software offers a number of built-in reports that give you information about maintenance tasks that are due, work that's been previously completed, maintenance cost information, and more. To access reports, click the Reports button on the top menu. You'll see a listing for common reports. Uh, this serves as a quick way to access your most used reports. If you want to edit this list, to do so, you'll click on Setup at the very top, click on User Preferences, and the Reports list will show up on the bottom. You can click on any of these, uh, 1 through 10, click the drop-down box, and then choose a report name to populate that Common Reports listing. To view all available reports, click on Reports again, and choose the last option, View All Reports. On the left-hand side, you'll have a number of categories to choose from. Um, we'll go over the most used or most commonly used report categories. So in the Equipment category, you'll see a Maintenance, or I'm sorry, History Maintenance category within. Inside of here, a few common reports are the uh, History Cost Summary, History Overview and Detailed, the Total Operating Cost Summary Report as well. These all show, for equipment, what the maintenance cost is over time. On the top, you can choose Selected Equipment, which, from your equipment list, anything that is checked or highlighted. You can choose equipment from a specific location, or you can choose all equipment in the system. The filters at the top will depend on which report you're running. Not all of the reports will have the same drop-down boxes, but most of them, if not all of them, will have this select option here for equipment. You can choose a status for equipment on this specific report. You can choose a date range. We have a number of pre-populated date ranges here. If none of these match with what you need, you can choose custom, and this will let you add your own date range. And on the top right, there's an additional criteria button. If you click on this, you'll have more advanced filtering of what you want to show or what you want to remove from the report as far as the records are concerned. Once you have everything on the top set up the way you want, you would click on refresh and that would update the results. So for example, here, let's say I'm going to run the history overview report. I really only have one unit pulled up right now because of the selected equipment at the top. I can click on this go to all equipment, hit refresh, and now I can see a number of units in here along with work that's been done, maintenance costs, etc. Some other reports that are handy, uh, we went over this history maintenance, which basically most of the items, if not all of them in here, are work that's been done previously to equipment, uh, and this way you can see cost and how much it maintenance costs, fuel costs, things like that. There's a history fuel, which is specifically for fuel transactions. So you can see how much you've spent on fuel, how many gallons used over a specific date range. We're still in this equipment category, but there's a notifications category within. There's a maintenance due summary report and a maintenance due detail report. So any maintenance that's due, you know, PM services that are coming up, you can run this report Again, we'll, we'll do all here. So it'll show you the name of the unit, and it'll tell you the name of the maintenance when, and when it is due. Another handy report is in the inventory section. There is an inventory usage report. There's a few of them here. And this will tell you when a part was used and how often. And you can also filter this out by a date range. We went over the filters on the top. We should probably go over how to go ahead and print this report out. So let's do, for example, equipment listing. We'll do for all. Refresh. We'll go over these buttons underneath of the drop downs. So this is the preview button. We already have the preview up, so we don't have to worry about that. 
print button, email button, find or search button, and then these three here correspond to the zooming on how large the report is previewing on the screen. So this, this uh, button here, let's do whole page. So that just shows the whole thing. The next one is page width. So it goes out to the end. And then this one is 100%. So that's the full report zoom. If you want to zoom in further or less, you can also go into this box and you can type in a number that you'd like, hit enter, and then that'll make the preview change. This particular report doesn't have multiple pages, um, but this is the page number here, and you can go back and forward. So let's say you want to print this report. I'm going to go ahead and hit the printer icon on the top left. It's going to show me my printer name, which is any printer that's available in Windows. Whatever your default Windows printer is will show up here. You can choose a specific page range if you'd like. Pressing OK will send the report to the printer. If you want to save this report as a file, perhaps to keep it in an archive, or if you want to, for example, save it as a PDF file to email it to somebody, you would use this checkbox on the bottom here that says print the file. When that is checked, these other options light up. The type box, this is saying what kind of file you want to save this report as. PDF is the most commonly used. On some reports, you can export them as a spreadsheet, and that's these XLS or XLSX types. Data file is going to try and do every row of the report. Report file is going to try and do not only the rows, but also the header, names. Uh, it's going to try and mimic the exact report preview in Excel. Once you pick the type, Underneath there is a where box, and on the right hand side there is a button with three dots. If you click on the button with three dots, it's going to ask you where you want to save the file, so you can choose a location on your file system, and then on the bottom it's going to ask you what you want to call it. So for this example we can just say test, and save, and it automatically fills in the file path and file name for you. Pressing OK here, even though we have the printer picked, because we have print to file checked, the report won't actually go to the printer. It'll simply just save to this file name here. In addition to our normal reports, we also have charts available. On the report viewer screen, you can get to them by clicking on the chart tab. Another way of getting to them is through the report button at the very top menu. You can click on the charts option here. Charts are a great way to visualize different types of costs, such as maintenance costs or fuel costs. So for example, we can do history summary by date. You have your filters again at the top for equipment location and date range. On the right hand side, we can actually change the view of this chart by clicking this column diagram button. So if we wanted a pie chart, we could choose that. We could choose another bar with horizontal bars. So it's very customizable. On the top, there's a section for data levels. So I can select the year. And then as you go through each of these, uh, we'll do year, quarter, month, day, and it'll just drill down as far as, far as you want to go to get the, the uh, chart that you would like. As you can see here, if you right click on the report, you can export to a specific file type if you want to save the chart and print it out for later or if you want to email it to someone. Thanks for watching. You can find more video tutorials on our YouTube channel or for more information about our software products, you can visit our website at mtcpro.com.